in the very heart of Africa, deep in the forests of the Congo Basin, where quiet landscape and nature reign supreme. One scientist brings two worlds together as she seeks to uncover the mysteries of one of the forest's most elusive creatures, Africa's western lowland gorilla. of the Congo tell a legend about the creation of the world. The earth was born of fire, and fire gave birth to the forest. Animals and plants arrived to give the forest eternal life. They learned to hunt in the forest. And to fish its rivers and streams. In time, the people prospered. The forest gave them life, and they were thankful, paying homage in their rituals to the forest and all its animals including the great apes. Among these apes, the western lowland gorilla. It's the one we think we know, the one we see in zoos. Yet in truth, it is the one we know the least about. Dr. Magdalena Bermejo and her husband, cinematographer Herman Vieira, want to do what no one has done before, follow a group of Western lowland gorillas and document their daily lives. For me, to study Western lowland gorillas in the forest gives me the opportunity to learn about the behavior of these animals. And it's very important because it's very little known about Western lowland gorilla, but also I am excited each day that we are following, and it's something like hunting, but we don't kill. Bermejo actually began her journey to the heart of the African forest as a little girl growing up in Spain. Like most of us, she first saw apes in circuses and zoos. But from there, her interest only grew. When I was a teenager, I saw a National Geographic film about Jane Goodall. I was impressed with one image. The image was of a group of chimpanzees living not in circuses and zoos, but naturally in the wild. The film changed Bermejo's life, inspiring her to study apes in Africa, just as Jane Goodall was doing. I thought that if this woman can do it, I can do it also. Less than a decade after seeing the film, Bermejo was in Africa studying chimpanzees. Not the typical career path for a young Spanish woman. Her independent spirit captured the heart of a young student, Herman Iyera. When I was young, I dreamed of living my life in the wild. I didn't want to work for a big corporation. Magda led me in the direction I had dreamed about. Now, after 12 years of studying primates in other parts of Africa, they arrive in the Republic of the Congo determined to uncover the secrets of Western lowland gorillas. 
Finding gorillas in this wilderness will be daunting and nearly impossible without the aid of the people who live here. But when Magda and Hermann arrive in the Congolese village of Langi Langi, they encounter fear and distrust. A distrust of foreigners rooted in history and a long-standing fear of gorillas rooted in legend and reality. I was afraid of gorillas because once a gorilla almost killed me. Pierre was 20 years old then and known as a great hunter. One day, while out collecting bark to repair the walls of his home, he unwittingly crossed into the territory of a gorilla family group. Stomping through the bush and hammering at trees, Pierre made quite a racket. A racket at least one gorilla may have interpreted as a threat. The gorilla had me cornered. He bit my arm. I picked up my other arm, but he bit that arm too. The gorilla's arm was around my neck. My hand was already in his mouth. He beat me on the head. He had both of my hands in his mouth. I called out my father's name. The gorilla let me alone and left. But he had eaten my fingers right down to the bone. This is why my hands are deformed. With stories like Pierre's to frighten them, the people of Langi Langi cannot understand why anyone would simply want to watch gorillas. But every morning, Magda and Hermann set out from the village to do just that, returning each evening to discuss their notes and observations. Their diligence and commitment does not go unnoticed. And gradually, the people of Langi Langi begin to trust them. Then, after more than a year of living in the village, they are told a remarkable story. A story about a legendary place deep in the forest, a beloved village called Losi. <laughs> We left everything there. Bananas, manioc, and fish. Located on a river, Losi was extraordinarily rich. Rich in plants, animals, and gorillas. It was a place no one wanted to leave. We don't live here by choice. We had to leave our village because of the gorillas. As the story goes, 50 years ago, French colonialists ordered the people of Losi to track and help capture baby gorillas. But gorillas are fiercely protective of their young and the people believe that kidnapping their babies will be an invitation to attack. With a conviction born of fear and respect, the people of Losi refuse. Outraged, the authorities force them to abandon their beloved and once thriving village. They put my grandfather in prison. Then they divide us into two groups. Some of us went to one village. The rest of us came here. Losi may have lost its villagers 50 years ago, but its villagers never lost their love for Losi. People didn't want us to go to Losi because they thought we wanted to keep the area for ourselves. We told them that we were only here to study the animals. Only if they want us to go to Lorsi could we go. 
Convinced at last of Magda and Hermann's intentions, the people agree to take them to Lucy. And Lucy is definitely where they want to go, because according to the villagers, Lucy is where the gorillas are. By the time they set off, nearly everyone from the village is helping out. I remember the, the day that we are crossing the savanna area to reach Losi with all the people. It was I, I think that was all the members of uh, Lengi Lengi. I was so excited, really. It was a day very special for me. 18 miles into the forest, they reach the place where the village of Losi once stood. <laughs> once there, the people build a traditional house for Magda and Hermann. Vines replace hammer and nail, each tied in place by hand. They carefully layer thick rubbery leaves that will serve as roof tiles. The women make mud to plaster the walls. And so, after 50 years, life returns to Losi. Everyone quickly settles into a routine, almost as if the people of Losi never left. Life in a place like this is relatively simple. With few exceptions, what you can't find or fashion from the natural materials at hand, you simply do without. Water is carried in from a nearby stream, and almost everything eaten is either grown nearby or gathered from the forest. A radio serves as the village telephone. And showers come from a bucket, one cup at a time. When you take shower, some of the times there is some monkeys here because it's the line to cross from this side of the campament to this other side. And you're taking the shower and they are crossing and sometimes they stop and see and really it's very funny, very nice. Food preparation is basic. Most meals are cooked over an open fire. Bread is baked in an oven dug into the ground. And cooks have their choice of free-range chickens. Many times when we're hungry, we think of things that we eat in Europe. It is true that we always dream of things we do not have. But you don't change your life just because you have to eat lentils. Low sea forest is like nothing Magda and Hermann have ever seen. The forest is blanketed with Marantasi, the same thick rubbery plant villagers use to roof their homes. Its proliferation here is the clearest evidence yet that this is prime gorilla country, just as Langi Langi's transplanted villagers said it would be. But finding gorillas in this dense vegetation will be another matter.
hunter-trackers work these forests all the time, and every bit of their skill and experience will be needed out here. The trackers is very important. If you lost all time the group, and you find each group one time a week, you can stay 20 years and nothing. Eventually, the trackers will have to find a gorilla group and stick with it, adapting their skills to a new purpose. When hunting, they surround their quarry, using sounds to coordinate their movements. Once an animal is located, it's cornered and driven to the nets. Boys learn to hunt at a young age, a process which often means coming to terms with the forest. Back when I was young, my big brother took me into the forest. He showed me gorillas and forest hogs. I was afraid, but I continued to go into the forest with him. And that is how I became used to the forest. Zephyr Nukuko is known as an excellent hunter-tracker. Each morning, he leads Magda and Herman out in the search for gorillas. The first clues they find are sleeping sites, places where gorilla groups have spent the night. One. Two and three. Nests of crushed matted leaves mean gorillas have slept here recently. Just how recently can be estimated from their dung. This is the dung that is uh, decomposing and uh, this is for yesterday normally. And this is very important when we were tracking gorillas because we can know that it was yesterday tracks or today. Even the remains of partially eaten plant stems provide clues, if you know what you're looking at. And then when it's not today, it begins to be a little brown here. And it's more brown if it's two days, three days, or four days. It smells like um, carrots, and they're just like children uh, looking for sugary things, you know. But after days of chasing clues in the forest, they've only caught glimpses of gorillas. To aid in the search, the village elders decide to call on the ancestors. <laughs> The ceremony is called chow chow, an ancient ritual meant to bring blessings and good fortune. The Mboko Alangi people believe that the land belongs to their ancestors, and it is their influence that will bring Magda and Herman success or failure. We have come here to find many gorillas. We are the children of Lucy. We come to see the gorillas. We want to know many gorillas. The ceremony ends with a dance dedicated to the spirit of their ancestors and to the gorillas. We were skeptical, but we understand that it's necessary when you work with people in a place that is not your own place, you need to make an effort to understand, to respect them. Soon after 
after setting out the next morning, and less than two miles from Losi, the forest is alive with sounds. The sounds of gorillas. They announce their presence with grunts and chest beats. And then, it's an entire group. the daylights out of one of the trackers. He kept his eyes closed for the entire time. He thought he didn't look, he wouldn't be seen. The leader of the group, a huge silverback, is the most intimidating. One time, the silverback rose to his feet and began to beat his chest. <laughs> oh, it was sensational. As suddenly as they appeared, the group disappears, vanishing into a wall of green. Magda now knows this is a place to be. One of the first things she does is take a survey of the area's Marantasi forest which indicates a population of as many as 11 gorillas per square kilometer. Now they must find and track a group suitable for continuous study. In the noisy undergrowth, Magda and her trackers adopt techniques to minimize the disturbance. Garden shears replace machetes, and Magda insists that they tread lightly, especially when around the silverback. And they want to show to the others, now I have decided to move, and to show to the others that they, they are, he is the leader. He walk like this. And you make noise like this. You show to them that you want to be the leader also. Then when we walk and we are close to them, we make like this very slowly. And now he knows that you are just moving with the group. Out here, gorillas dictate the rules of the game. But sometimes they make something like, who? It's just to know who is that wants to approach us. And then you stop and you show to them I know very well your group, and I stop, and I wait. If you want, I wait five minutes, and after that, you can go. And then the animals stay there. If not, they go away, and you don't see nothing. Magda and Zephyrin use gestures instead of words as they make their way through the forest. In, in a moment, he stopped, and I understand I need to stop. He hears something, and if the animals are close, he just look. And I know in this direction, the animals are there. And in this moment, we begin to walk slowly. A slight move of Magda's head tells Herman he can come forward with his camera. Less than a month after coming to Losi, Herman catches a magnificent image in his lens. 350 pounds of male gorilla, a silverback. They decide to call him Apollo.
Then the first time that we saw Apollo, I was so impressed. Uh, it was really incredible. And uh, he watched Herman and me, and he was so curious. Apollo leads a group that includes several adult females and their offspring, a potentially good group for study. Older group members, especially females with young infants, maintain a safe distance from the humans. Some of the youngsters, on the other hand, seem less cautious and are willing to go about their business in full view of Hermann's camera. He begins collecting images of these young group members. The video is like a, a family album. When things happen in the field, they, they happen very quickly. But with the video, you can look at the gorillas over and over again and study their behavior. Each gorilla has a personality and style of its own. Some are mellow, Some are playful. Some are more rambunctious. A few, like this older female, seem to want nothing to do with humans. While others, like this one, prefer to show off. She is very excited near the observers. She makes some game with the observers also. And uh, because she decided to stay close to us, the rest of the group stay also. The gorillas will have to get used to the presence of humans before Magda can be assured that she's observing natural behavior. But no scientist has ever habituated western lowland gorillas in the wild. Magda knows habituating them means following them day after day. Not only seeing the gorillas, but being seen by them. And out here, a gorilla can be 15 feet away and nearly invisible. You can stay in one place like this, and the animals are just walking slowly. And in one moment, suddenly, this is the one wonderful thing, and one begins to climb. And then, in one moment, five, six, seven individuals can be seen, and this is very... This is a very special thing. Magda has an idea about how to maintain contact. She decides to adopt one of the gorilla's communication techniques. These gorillas often clap when excited, or to let other gorillas know where they are. Magda thinks communicating with them in their own language may help speed the habituation process. We start clapping uh, when we stay close to the gorillas uh, because they feel safe and comfortable if they know where we are. Some of the youngsters use clapping uh, with observers just to interact with, uh, with us. It's a game. Once they know where the observers are, they go off to do what looks suspiciously like play. Western lowland gorillas are climbers, 
For them, the forest is a giant jungle gym full of ups and downs. Infants especially, it's difficult for them to climb trees and um, they need to learn how to move in different positions. Learning how to negotiate vines and branches takes time and a lot of practice, even for a gorilla. As a young gorilla's weight increases, these exercises become more serious. Pick the wrong branch or vine to hang on to, and you might end up on the ground. Youngsters like to build day nests up in the trees, bending branches to their purpose and ending up with a fine place for an afternoon nap. Provided you first tested the branches for strength. Already the gorillas appear to be acting more naturally. Good news for Hermann and Magda. And for the new generation, they are born and they see the observer at first and for them it's really very natural the observer is there. You are there, but the animals forget completely that you are there. Magda and Hermann begin to observe more interaction between group members. When a young female returns to her day nest, she finds a young squatter. The squatter stakes her claim by bending another branch to augment the nest. For the time being, they settle down together. But the younger one still isn't satisfied. She pokes, she prods, and generally makes a nuisance of herself. Eventually, the older one has had enough. She moves temptation out of the way, turning her back to invite a scratch. But with all the activity up there, it's the nest that finally gives out. The gorillas now seem more comfortable around humans. But the humans are having problems of their own. The animals decided to rest during two hours. It's really terrible. Sorry, but I have one on the eyes. Sweat bees, swarms of them. They come out in the afternoon, hungry for the salty sweat of overheated bodies. You know, you need to be patient, but sometimes it's difficult, you know. It's difficult. Very difficult. And the forest has an almost endless supply of such torments. The sting of this inch-long ant burns like a hot, piercing needle. They're found in trees like this one, called Bartaria. Local gossip tells of adulterous wives being tied to the ant-infested trees as punishment for their crimes. Believe me, the first time they bite, it's very bad. The first time, it's like a bee sting. Your finger swells for a few days. But after a time, you build up an immunity, and it isn't so bad. Experienced trackers know to avoid this tree. Novices usually don't. 
You are very naive. You stop to look at the gorillas and you put your hands on the tree. That's the moment they bite. The pain from their sting lasts hours, maybe even days. But Losi Forest harbors more insidious threats. Voila. This is the one. This is the flight that brings filaria, the little nightmare. It's small, but it's bad. Frequent bites from the flies build an army of parasites in the tissues and bloodstream of its victims. As Herman knows all too well. There are some places where you are swollen, and sometimes it can be more painful. It depends on the nerve they attack. Now, even to close my hand is difficult. At the moment the filaria is in my blood, and it circulates in my blood system. Once I had an eye that resembled cautious clay, he was truly swollen. In the forest, night can be even more dangerous than day. And there's no guarantee your sleep won't be interrupted by creatures crawling through the dark. This army of ants is on a nocturnal hunting safari. One night, Herman was dreaming that he was being attacked by ants. And suddenly, he realized that it's not a dream and the ants were coming. But I am sleeping. I don't feel nothing. And in one moment I hear some noise and he get up and cry and then I say, I stay in the bed. It took me a few seconds to realize what was happening. I look out and saw the bed, the mosquito net, the wall were swarming with safari ants. There is no time to waste. First, they sweep the ants from the house. Then, charcoal embers create a line of defense preventing the ants' return, at least for now. Fire drives danger back into the forest. The next morning, work is delayed. Many things in Losi require a great deal of patience. Waiting out the rain may require the most. It can rain as much as five feet in a single year. During the wet season, work can be held up for days. Today, the rains end early, and Magda wastes no time in getting back on the trail. A 
Apollo's group is back on the trail again, too, doing just what they do during many of their waking hours, looking for food. I'll tell you how gorillas pass the day. They start eating around 6 in the morning. At 9 they rest, and by 10 they're moving again and looking for food. For western lowland gorillas, life revolves around food. They spend almost half of their day foraging and feeding. They are very selective in what they eat. When they are eating on the ground and you see this marantasi, you, you, you think it's full of food. This is true, it's full of food, but they choose what they want to eat. With us, imagine that the humans stay eight hours eating, it's so difficult. But we have all the things on the table and we go to the fridge and take something and we eat. The forest offers a wide range of plants and fruits to gorillas. But there are other things they like to eat, including their own dung. Magda and her team are now able to approach Apollo's group without alarming them. In fact, most of the gorillas go about their day-to-day -day activities as if Magda and her team aren't even there. When Magda first began at Losi, the gorillas were always wary in open spaces. When observers were nearby, crossing trails caused panic. That doesn't happen anymore. I remember this observation the other day with uh, Maya stopping on the trail, and she forget completely that we are there, and she is interested to follow the fly of a, a bird, you know? It's, um, it's something magical. Sometimes when I am following the animals in this Marantasi forest, I need to see the sky and follow something. And for me, it was a little similar. Once the gorillas cross the trail, Magda and Zephyrin give them some space. But finding the group again can be difficult. He needs to know because some ones cross the other side and some others cross here. And now he, ne he needs to decide which the bigger part is just to follow. And I ask him how he knows now that the others cross here. And he say to me that this to leave. You know, this leaf is a little push. For us it's difficult to see, but for him it's so easy. When a gorilla is traveling in a certain area, I know where he will go next. If he's walking here, he will probably go to a certain place. I always say that gorillas are like people. When they are in a certain area, they know which trees have fruit for them to eat. Zephyrin is not only able to predict the group's movement, but he has come to know the gorillas and the forest like the back of his own hand. Some of the things that I know now, I learn from Zephyrin. When he follows the animals, he knows exactly what happens, when to approach the animals, and the feelings of these animals in this moment. Then, one day, after nearly five years of tracking and observing Apollo's group, their teamwork pays off. The gorillas are habituated to human presence. Magda is convinced by the female who used to fear humans most. 
I remember one day I saw her in a tree and she rest. This was very special for me because in this moment I understood that they were habituated because she was the last one. Although he has been there every step of the way, Zephyrin is astonished. To follow and to habituate without a machete, with a pair of garden shears, I didn't even think we would find them, never mind habituate a group like Apollo's. But they have, and what Magda has accomplished has never been done before. As a result, they've been able to record behaviors rarely ever seen in the wild. This female rubs a tree root on her chest to clean it before she eats it. Another female deliberately rolls a piece of wood toward this rotting tree. She uses it as a stepping stool to reach higher up. These images reveal that gorillas may be natural tool users. Because she's able to spend as much as 45 hours a month observing gorillas, Magda is gaining insights into the workings of Apollo's group. This high-ranking female is gnawing on a rotting log apparently an important source of starch and carbohydrates. So important, in fact, that the rest of the group are lined up in descending order, each one waiting patiently for its turn. No one will hurry her, even if she dallies, and dally she does. Now that Magda has demonstrated an ability to get this close, the challenge will be to keep a safe distance. If you feel that someone begins to come very close and wants to touch something or touch you, I think you need to say stop. And this is the, the hard thing, because you want to observe the animals and you, you need to say, no, I stop here now. Gorillas are at risk of catching human diseases if we get too close. Habituation can also make them more vulnerable to poachers. Recently, three gorilla carcasses were found just a few miles from Losi. The people of Lengi Lengi, with support from Ecofac, the European finance conservation group that funds Magda's project, have set up anti-poaching patrols. Today, those who once told tales of killer gorillas have been turned around, even the most cynical among them. The gorilla attacked me because back then, they weren't habituated like today. Now we consider the gorillas something to conserve. We want to save them. The people of Lengi Lengi have become conservationists in their own right. They've successfully petitioned the Congolese government to make Losi a sanctuary where all hunting is banned. The village has grown and the women often come together to fish Losi's rivers. They fish the way their ancestors fished for hundreds of years, building dams and bailing a portion of the river dry.
The heirs of those once forced to abandon Losi are now reclaiming their treasured land. The bounty of the forest has been restored to them. And this time, they are prepared to coexist peacefully with all the animals that call this place home. A feeling inspired by Magda and Hermann's work. Ça c'est la famille d'Apollo, et c'est on va commencer pour les enfants d'Apollo. Ici vous voyez, il aime beaucoup jouer avec tous les nouveaux nés comme nous. Alors je vois que c'est mélange. I believe it's important to include the local people in our research. When we show them these films, they say that the gorillas are like us. Lui aussi, Orfeo, il est un petit mal qui... Je crois que quand Apollo, il sera très grand, très vieux, c'est lui qui va prendre sa place. This isn't just entertainment. You see, they are very interested in what they are watching. They respect the gorillas. They even talk about Apollo as though he's another person in the village. These children hold the future of Western lowland gorillas in their hands. When my son is old enough, I would like to take him into the forest and show him all the things he needs to know. I will teach him how to hunt, how to find the forest hogs, and how to follow the gorillas. The future of Africa's wildlife is not only in the hands of researchers. Scientists must adapt their work to include the local people, their culture, and traditions. The future depends on working together toward common goals. and to fish its rivers and streams. In time, the people prospered. The forest gave them life, and they were thankful, paying homage in their rituals to the forest and all its animals, including the great apes. Among these apes, the western lowland gorilla. It's the one we think we know, the one we see in zoos. Yet in truth, it is the one we know the least about. Dr. Magdalena Bermejo and her husband, cinematographer Herman Vieira, want to do what no one has done before, follow a group of Western lowland gorillas and document their daily lives. For me, to study Western lowland gorillas in the forest gives me the opportunity to learn about the behavior of these animals. And it's very important because it's very little known about Western lowland gorilla, but also I am excited each day that we are following. And it's something like hunting, but we don't kill. Now, after 12 years of studying primates in other parts of Africa, they arrive in the Republic of the Congo, determined to uncover the secrets of Western lowland gorillas. 
finding gorillas in this wilderness will be daunting and nearly impossible without the aid of the people who live here. But when Magda and Hermann arrive in the Congolese village of Langi Langi, they encounter fear and distrust. A distrust of foreigners rooted in history and a long-standing fear of gorillas rooted in legend and reality. I was afraid of gorillas because once a gorilla almost killed me. Pierre was 20 years old then and known as a great hunter. One day, while out collecting bark to repair the walls of his home, he unwittingly crossed into the territory of a gorilla family group. Stomping through the bush and hammering at trees, Pierre made quite a racket. A racket at least one gorilla may have interpreted as a threat. Bermejo actually began her journey to the heart of the African forest as a little girl growing up in Spain. Like most of us, she first saw apes and circuses in zoos. But from there, her interest only grew. When I was a teenager, I saw a National Geographic film about Jane Goodall. I was impressed with one image. The image was of a group of chimpanzees living not in circuses and zoos, but naturally in the wild. The film changed Bermejo's life, inspiring her to study apes in Africa, just as Jane Goodall was doing. I, I thought that if this woman can do it, I can do it also. Less than a decade after seeing the film, Bermejo was in Africa studying chimpanzees. Not the typical career path for a young Spanish woman. Her independent spirit captured the heart of a young student, Herman Iyera. When I was young, I dreamed of living my life in the wild. I didn't want to work for a big corporation. Magda led me in the direction I had dreamed about. The gorilla had me cornered. He bit my arm. I picked up my other arm, but he bit that arm too. The gorilla's arm was around my neck. My hand was already in his mouth. He beat me on the head. He had both of my hands in his mouth. I called out my father's name. The gorilla let me alone and left, but he had eaten my fingers right down to the bone. This is why my hands are deformed. With stories like Pierre's to frighten them, the people of Langi Langi cannot understand why anyone would simply want to watch gorillas. But every morning, Magda and Hermann set out from the village to do just that, returning each evening to discuss their notes and observations. Their diligence and commitment does not go unnoticed, and gradually, the people of Langi Langi begin to trust them. Then, after more than a year of living in the village, they are told a remarkable story. A story about a legendary place deep in the forest, a beloved village called Losi. In the very heart of Africa, deep in the forests of the Congo Basin, where climate, landscape, and nature reign supreme. One 
Chinese scientist brings two worlds together as she seeks to uncover the mysteries of one of the forest's most elusive creatures, Africa's western lowland gorilla. of the Congo tell a legend about the creation of the world. The earth was born of fire, and fire gave birth to the forest. Animals and plants arrived to give the forest eternal life. Okay. They learned to hunt.